Okay, I think we're recording. What does it look like? Do you see a little red thing somewhere on your screen showing that it's recording? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. good, 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 cool. All right, here we are. Illustrator, what's new? I don't know. Um, I checked it, there's not a lot of good stuff. Oh, there's one freaking amazing thing. There's one really amazing thing. Um, but maybe I can quickly show you, but it's a little advanced, but not really. Okay, create new. So I just will go with our default um, 11 by 17. So points, I'm gonna, I, I, okay. So a beautiful thing about Illustrator is you can get things to scale, unless it's too big. I think an artboard in Illustrator is like 20 feet. So you can get a lot in on that artboard. If you're doing stoves, uh, you know, things that are realistic, irons or whatever, you know, you can get that in real perfect size, um, in real size. But you know, you are limited if you're doing like cars or trucks or houses. But even um, even Umax, I think if you're doing these paravon walls, these walls and stuff, you'd probably be able to fit it on an artboard real size. But anyway, my point is, before I get in here, um, you want to set your, if you're doing it real size, one to one scale, then you want to set this to millimeters, depending on the size of your thing or, or um, centimeters. And I'm going to go millimeters because I'm going to do something kind of small about this big. Uh, so points, uh, da, 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 millimeters. So I'm going to use millimeters. So you're doing something a little bit bigger, use centimeters. Anyway, we're good. I'm going to make it landscape. Yes. So that's how I'm setting it up. Super easy. I don't have to mess around with any of this. Uh, color mode, if it matters to you. CYMK is for hardcore printing, like big stuff. But the internet all uses RGB. And so most of our stuff is shown on the internet and virtually. So RGB uses up less uh, memory. Has Yeah, so I'm, I'm using RGB. Um, yeah, OK. Raster effects, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It does matter. This does matter when you start doing blurs and things like that, because it really uses a lot of memory on your computer. Um, but I'm not, don't plan on doing that right now. But you know, what? I could reduce that to 150 to help the computer because honestly, it's very heavy because it uses Photoshop filters in Illustrator, which is pixels, and it, it's just it's using a lot of memory. Anyway, there we go. Medium 150 DPI for raster effects. Raster effects is blurs and that type of stuff. Okay, here we have my board. And let me just make a nice little neat, set my, uh, set my things up. So this is, I guess this is what my default is. Now there's, uh, with these, with these uh, layouts, I mean, with these windows, but if I'm missing anything, I just will go into my window up here to pull off whatever I need. Okay, I haven't done a sketch yet of what, oh, I'll, I'll explain these little guys too. These things are very useful. These little, these little guys right here. So I'll just give you a quick, tell you why these things are useful. So what happens is, let's just turn them all off. Those are little bonus things. And this is a paid, paid um, plugin I use. So what happens is here you are mousing away, you know, um, start off with a basic shape. Okay, basic shapes, rectangle, you know, here's, here's where you get, hold it down, you get all of the shapes and you guys know that super basic. So let's just start off with a basic shape, rectangle. And I wanna start putting in details. So how you put in details is the pen tool, you use this tool a hell of a lot. In fact, maybe the most used tool is this, this pen tool. Anyway, so, okay, I'm, I'm doing stuff and I'm, I'm not drawing anything in particular, I'm just drawing something. So there, I'm gonna line like that. Um, and then, okay, I'm just doing some lines. So there we got some simple lines. By the way, I want to get rid of the white background. You can see the white background is causing this. It's, so if I turn off the white background, just click on that thing there, click on take away and you'll get rid of the white background. But anyway, so I've got these lines and I'm really using this pen tool a lot. So now I want to, let's say, get rid of this little segment here. So I'm gonna go in here and use the um, pen tool with a minus symbol, delete anchor point. So I, I'm gonna just, I wanted to delete this, so I delete it. So, okay. And, um, you know, so I wanna keep messing around with this tool. Now I wanna add anchor points. So there I have to go back. So there, 
oh, I wanted to lead another anchor point. So look at this, me going from this artboard to this constantly, constantly going back and forth, just as a pain in the butt. Um, so I want to delete an anchor point. So there's another example. I had to go back to this thing. So what you what you do on this, and I don't know if it's obvious, but you hold on, click hold on, uh, hold on to that thing and go over here. And, and there's this little thing over here, this little slide out thing. And you click on that and it will get this so you can put it right next to your drawing. And this saves you a lot of time because you do flip back and forth with some of these tools. So the tools that I use the most is this guy for sure. So I, I pull that off. Then another tool we use a hell of a lot is this tool here, the, the selection tool. And I'm gonna pull this thing off too. I'm just gonna, I'm holding, I'm holding my button down, my mouse button down and I click on that. And now I have this because I'm also always click on this white arrow to do micro adjustments of stuff, you know, so, okay, tell me if I'm going beyond because a lot of you have basics. And so, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know about you, Ariel, Ian, you say you have a little experience with Illustrator, but just tell me to slow down and, and anyone for that matter. But so, okay, we use these selection tools a lot. So the white one is uh, the just select individual points. And then the black arrow is to select the whole thing. So that's those, these two things I use really a lot. And you know what? I don't know why they have these things on here. Do you have these things? Because this could be a plugin. When, no, when I, don't, you... I don't have those. Great, good. I'm glad because I'm like, I don't even know what those things are. And I pull this thing off all the time. Normally I pull it off and you just get the white and black arrows which makes it way simpler, but this is plug-in thing and just automatically puts those extensions on. So anyway, these two tools we use absolutely the most. We need these constantly. Um, and as I use these tools, I might pull them off, but for now I don't need them. So let's start off with drawing something. So here's, 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 an, here's an interesting idea as far as, um, you know, for, for product design, silhouette is very, very important. You want a very nice silhouette. So it's iconic. Um, you know, let's let's share some, some iconic shapes. Uh, so for example, I'm just gonna throw some shapes out and, and ask you, what do you think this reminds you of? What, what product does this, and I'm gonna use my pen. I'm faster with my pen. So if you're on Cintiq, you can use your pen on this too. And pen saves you a bunch of time as well, because instead of having to mouse around, you just move your hand back and forth. I don't know if you can see me trying to, I'll, I'll try to move this over. Anyway, there we go. So it's way easier to da, 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 move your hand back and forth. All right, tell me, tell me what this is. Um, okay, here's a circle to turn it black. It has, I, I'm just gonna do that. Now just tell me if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna give you a few shapes and, and this will express what I'm trying to say, oops. So what, what product do you think that is? It's very iconic. That's another one. Oh, here's another one. I hope this one's Obvious. I'm just showing my old schoolness with this one. And I'm doing this for a purpose. I'm doing silhouettes for a purpose. I'm, I'm showing you basically how to quickly come up with silhouettes because you know how they can be very important. Um, I'm using just only basic shapes more or less here. And hold on, I'm just, I know I'm busting through quick, but I'm using basic stuff. Okay, so um, tell me, guys, do you know what I'm doing, how I'm using these tools so far? Are you making an Xbox? Thank you, yeah. Okay, so that's super iconic, this. All right, let me change the color for you, and now you'll get it. I hope. Does that remind you of anything? 
It's very iconic. Is it the is it the hoverboard from Back to the Future? <laughs> Damn it! Maybe my no. This is a Beats. This is the Beats pill thing. Uh, what other iconic shapes? There's there's a lot of uh God. I, it's just so easy that I can't even think of anything that's super iconic. Silhouettes are important, as you know. Um, and so this software is great to bust out silhouettes. So let's, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a piece of hi-fi because I put knobs and LCD displays. So, okay, I'm gonna do hi-fi, but not a normal hi-fi like my amplifier, something a little more modern, but still kind of in that world. So, um, uh, let me create some silhouettes for, I'm just saying it's a component of a hi-fi, like a tuner or an amplifier, a separates, one of the separates. So I want to bust out and I'm going to go black because I really want a silhouette. So by the way, here's, here's the tool that I'm using. This little guy right here, I use this a lot also. Basic shapes, rectangle, squares, rounded corner stuff, uh, ellipses, circles, polygons, uh, pentagons, octagons, stars. I never use a flare, flare tool, but this little guy right here is how you build quick shapes. I don't know why they have this rounded corner rectangle, which I just used because there's such a brilliant thing with Illustrator. Let me take that off and draw a rectangle instead. I draw a rectangle and I'm gonna go black. This is how you control your colors right in here. You can flick back and forth. Um, this solid block is the fill color and this outer thing right here, right in here, that is the uh, um, line, the outline color, the, the, your, your path line color. Uh, so anyway, and I want to get rid of this white outline. I don't want it. So, but the reason why I said why why do they why why do they have that rounded uh, that rounded box default in here? Because now, so here's obviously sharp edges, but I just click in here with by the way with the white white thing, not the black thing, the the white arrow. Click on that, and these little icons appear, and and what they are, they're corner controllers. So I can make this thing super round like a pill. And let me copy that. I'm gonna grab it, the whole thing, and press Option, Command, Shift, bring it down. And that's how I can duplicate it super easily without having to press Control C and V. And notice how my um, arrow has a little white one underneath. That means it's copying and pasting. And I'm holding Shift, so it keeps it in, in, in uh, directly in line. So that's how I'm doing that. But I can, I, I'm going to click again with my white arrow in here and I can adjust, so I can adjust my corners. So there, this is another, this is going to be another silhouette shape for my hi-fi component. Um, let's try something different. Um, some, okay, just sticking with black. Let's say I'm just going to use the hard edged um, rectangle. So maybe I'm going to create a new iconic shape by, uh, it's got to be stackable. So the thing is with these black boxes, since you're not getting hung up in details, oops, sorry, copy, control C is copy, control F is paste in front, which is useful all the time. So using black, since you're devoid of details, you can really focus on silhouettes. So this is another one that would be stackable, made up of just simple black shapes. Uh, let's try something else. Let's try a sideways, a sideways um, Xbox. So I'm going to use a pen tool on this, and I'm going to make a, a line. OK, I'm going to make a solid line right here. So solid line, let me swap this around. As you can see, you cannot see the blue is only showing my, my uh, path, but I wanted a black line. So what I'm gonna do is the black, it's currently filled with black, even though you can't see it, but I'm gonna click this little arrow switcher right here. And now my line is black. It's took with that little arrow right here, it took the background color and swapped it into the foreground color. Oh, by the way, I've got a cool new tool. Let me let me use it and experiment with you. I've never tried it. I paid for this thing. Um, I'm just gonna open it. It's a it's a cursor thing. Um, one sec. 
I'm gonna just open it. Finder, go to applications. It's called Cursor King <laughs> or something like that. Oh, Cursor Pro. All right, cool. There we go. Because it might help you see my cursor better. Turn it on. Great. Okay, great. Hey, hey. Look at me, all fancy. Okay, so anyway, what am I talking about now? Oh yeah, so line. That's how I'm controlling line. So I'm trying to create a bunch of silhouettes for my uh, for my hi-fi piece. I didn't have to draw that, but I just did. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I, I just drew that with my pen tool, just a simple square, and I'm going to add anchor points. So I'm going to go to my thing here. In case you haven't pulled these guys off, it's under here hold it and then it's a plus uh pen tool plus that's how i can add an anchor point so i'm just gonna just roughly since these are just sketches i don't need to be perfect be accurate um so i put in a points in there and now what i want to do i'm going to my white arrow which is the direct selection tool and i'm gonna slip, go i'm gonna create uh an xbox shape but um Uh, on its side. In fact, actually, the Xbox you can lay on its side. So some silhouette shapes, and I'm going to turn it black. Simply, right now it's a black outline. If I click this little guy here, boom, I just just swap. So now the out the, the line color is black. I mean, sorry, it feels black. So this this can be very useful for creating a bunch of iconic shapes. And then I could choose one to flesh out. So just for simplicity's sake, let's say this is an amplifier, and I'm going to be old school. Only in the sense that I'm going to use a volume knob. Um, okay, so let's start putting in some volume knobs in this, and just get those iconic and proportions. This is really great for proportions. So, okay, I'm going into my uh, tool library here, tool palette box, ellipse tool. So, what you do is you press, if you want to make a perfect circle, you press shift. And here, I'm going to start, okay, press shift to make it perfect. If I take my hand off shift, it comes in ellipse. So I'm going to delete that and then create a volume knob. Okay. I'm doing it off to the side here because the title of this class is called creating assets. And assets are all the little bits and pieces you use multiple times. Um, let me give you an example. Okay, I'm gonna stop my share and share my desktop so I can flip back and forth between software. So I'm gonna share my screen again, but this time my desktop. I'll give you some real life examples of assets. Okay, and I've already built assets. I've already got one, two, three, four shapes and a volume knob, which I'm gonna build out but let me just give you some examples of assets. So I'm gonna open up my bridge, which is a really good Adobe software, which ties in all your Adobe stuff. And it's very nice. It takes a little bit to open though. And I highly recommend you start doing this at your early um, career stage. You start doing what I'm gonna show you right now. By the time 20 years down the road, like I've been doing it, you will have so many assets. This is a high school class. Anyway, uh, let me show you. Okay, now here's my file system. Here's where my favorites are, where I hit all the time. So I have vector graphics and that's top because I download a lot of vector graphics and I make vector graphics and I use this thing a lot. And so, you know, I've downloaded, I've taken images, photographs and live traced them. This is, you know, something I'll show you later, but you know, things that you can use down the road, like telephone poles, you know, I'm sure you can use that as a background. I can use that. I have assets like that. You know, some logos I need like, uh, you know, Red Wings and Tigers, you know, Detroit stuff for flyers or whatever, but I can also reuse them for re rearrange them, whatever. Um, so metal, brushed metal finishes that you can easily apply on Illustrator. This is not vector, but it's still, it's, you can still put it into Illustrator. So, you know, I need that for surfaces. Um, and I have tons of that stuff. Oopsie, vector graphics. Um, 
let's just zoom out a little bit. So just building up stuff. So I downloaded this grunge um, grunge thing. And, you know, this is great for like doing logos and, and I'm doing a lot of stuff for Jeep right now. So this is relevant for Jeep. It's muddy and splattery. You know, I've downloaded this stuff, a lot of it. A lot of it's free. Um, and, you know, it just, if you need some brush strokes, just give that graffiti look, whatever, it's brilliant for flyers and all that stuff. Um, okay, I've downloaded Chains. This, this was free. This is a, <gasps> sorry, this is a free one. Um, chains, because I need chains sometimes, you know, for like motorcycle or bicycle. Um, so these are assets, but I'm going to give you a real life example of how um, I use them. This is something that we all worked on last semester. My name, and I can always pull that off and stamp it onto any drawing or anything that I need to put my signature on. Cracks, I drew cracks, you know, so this is all useful. Eyeballs, I live traced eyeballs, Detroit. Um, skyline, of course, you can use that so much in, in, in here, this Detroit, the Detroit D. I download cars for wraps, police cars. But inside here, I have um, files with graffiti. Some graffiti writers who I'm friends with did some writing for me. I've got splatters. Um, you know, this always looks urban and cool. I don't think it ever goes out of style. Um, let's see, yep, I can click that and move it. I can just grab that. I need to get the funk on. So I just move it into my drawing and, you know, or copy and paste it. So let me just go back to the bridge. So build up your assets is basically what I'm saying. If you download, if you make something, then keep it and put it into a file. So I've got icons here. And I think this is icons like, you know, the bathroom sign or family sign, you know, uh, icons, happy, uh, you, uh, just icons, keys. Here I've got hundreds of icons in case I need that for like user interface or phone apps and stuff like that. So I just, so, you know, you can just label them correctly, hexagon, carbon fiber, textures. Let's see what I got, carbon fiber textures, simple. So these are just carbon fibers I've pulled off the internet free. And you can't really see it in this preview, but these are carbon fiber effects and I could easily open these in Illustrator and use them. Not everything is vector, but it doesn't matter. It's just a bunch of assets. But let me give you a real life example. So currently I'm working on, or it just I'm about to send it off this morning, a logo for, um, File open recent. I just worked on this yesterday. Helltrax logo ideas. Helltrax is a uh, is uh, a snow uh, a snow snow. Uh, here I'll show you a picture of what Helltrax is. Uh, this is what Helltrax is. Oh. Helltrax is these treads, you've seen this before, that you can easily take off your wheel and put on these tracks. And it's the dude's invention. The thing that makes his special is it's extra wide. It's like a meter wide. It's like, it's like three feet, more than three feet wide. And normally, and this is basically snowmobile tracks. Snowmobile tracks are 30 inches wide. And then he stuck two of them together. They already have tracks for cars and trucks but they're never that wide. And so what the purpose of this guy is, and I'll tell you, I'll explain how that goes into my assets, is this thing is unparalleled as far as you can go into six foot thick snow, soft powder, go right up a super steep embankment on a mountain and do rescue. Um, you can take snow, hardcore snowboarders up to the top of the piece um, off, off, um, off the normal routes. Um, and it just goes places that most other track vehicles cannot because most track vehicles have a track that's like 30 inches wide, but this guy is double. So he can go on the deepest snow and, and everything with this thing. This is his invention. So assets. So assets are creating things that you can reuse. So this, this little symbol is, I could reuse it and you can see I'm reusing that, that this symbol, it's obviously suggestive of tracks and I can reuse it multiple times in multiple different logos. Uh, so, you know, this is an important asset, uh, mountains. So 
this is my this is a sketch that I did in um, in Procreate just to create ideas quickly. Um, but all of these, here's a bunch of fonts I downloaded. You can download fonts, which adds so much funk. These are all free fonts. Just type in free fonts and download away. And so I can get all the funk that I needed. And these are all assets. And I can use, I use this guy a couple of times. Um, and so these are assets that, that, you, that you build up. And, uh, you know, okay, so that's a real life example. Here's another real life example. And this is much more broader. So I have a contract with, with Jeep that I do all, uh, all their graphics. So let me go into my, and this is, this is uh, where am I going? Um, a work. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, let me get an alphabetical file name. Okay. Uh, a, B, C, D, F, G, H, H, I, J, Jeep Graphics Studio. Okay, this is my graphic, uh, my Jeep Graphic Studio work. These are all assets actually, but if I go into graphic assets, so I just went through all my assets and found all the stuff I thought might be relevant for these Jeep graphics. And, oh, this is all like carbon fiber effects. Um, what else do I have? Let's just zoom in here. I have a lot of stuff which I can easily pull off and um, apply. So a bunch of carbon fiber effects, freebies. I pulled this off. I think I did this actually for my class with uh, you guys who I had last semester. Top view of humans um, for the top view, especially Max or any of you guys who are doing that room situation or the house situation, download a top view of a guy. And you know, that's great for plans. You know, I can use this. It's just, just a bunch of assets, but live traced telephone lines, just anything, birds. I need the birds a lot. Um, so yeah. So this are, these are off flames, you know, it's typical for cars and Hot Wheels. So I have all these assets which I can easily pull off and manipulate them um, and just, you know, uh, and reuse them. So, you know, here, here's an example. Let's see, is this, I think this was a freebie as well, free picks. So it's a free one, AI. So, okay, you might get a full illustration like this from a free download, but you can extract things. So, um, I might want to extract the soldier. So I have to ungroup it, which is object ungroup. So I can pull off just the one soldier. And I needed soldiers, object ungroup. It's grouped up like crazy. And I think it's command U or shift U, but hold on, ungroup. Sometimes they group it up so much. Let's just see now. Okay, so I can pull off my soldier if I need that. If I want this sun, I'm, let's just delete C. Yep, I can pull off this sun. So even though if you do get a complete um, illustration, everything is pieces. So you can pull off all that stuff. You, so, you know, those stars, that's actually pretty cool. I never pulled that off. I, I use the soldiers, but I mean, it's a little cheesy, but hey, maybe I can use this somehow down the road. So assets for my project, for the G project, I have all of these assets that I just compiled and built myself also. I built a lot of assets and that's what you would have you'd have a product design folder with assets. So let me get back to my hi-fi component and, and how to build assets. Um, I don't need that, so I don't need to save that. I don't need to save this. Nor this. Okay, so I mentioned uh, that I'm not going as I'm not going new school. I'm going old school as far as in the volume up. I think it's very tactile and it's very. We all know it. It's a lot better than a slider. And I'm not going to be innovative in my um, in the volume knob department. So I'm going to make this knob and make it make this volume knob be reused for all of these, but with slight differences. So here's my knob, um, and I'm going to start fleshing this knob out because it's a very prominent feature. So there's a volume knob, I'm gonna copy and paste on top. So control C, control F, it's pasted on top. So you can't see it because it's directly pasted on top. Now let's give it a little bit of a different color. So let's give it a gray color. So this is the fill color. 
So I'm, I'm using a gray and just double click on this guy to pull up your color um, palette. Okay, now it's gray and I'm just gonna sit here. I'm gonna grab this corner, hold shift and option. And it keeps it totally within the bounds, you know, completely square. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm starting to build my volume knob. Um, and I'll put in a little indicator like a little light or LED or something to show where the, you know, the mark is, the, the volume mark. So in here, I'm okay, what I'm doing, I'm choosing a line and I'm just gonna go in here a little bit and just draw a line. Click, click, um, and there I've got a line. You can't see anything though right now. So, but what I'm gonna do, I just got rid of my pen tool just by clicking on this white thing, but it's still indicated as you can see. And I'm just gonna turn it, green oh wait a sec oh it's it's it doesn't have any so right now it's filled with gray there is no fill it's one line swap that over so now i've got a color for the line there now the color is gray you can't see it though but i'm going to change it to green and in this case i have my swatches here and it's much easier than always clicking on the color palette thing i could click on this and choose a color let's just go red for now but also there's swatches which is much easier to get your basic colors. And it's up here, go to window swatches in case you don't have that uh, panel. So go to swatches and I just turned it off and turn it back on swatches. There we go. So it's much faster sometimes to just do that. So anyway, that's my little, that's my, um, where my volume, I know where my volume is. Let me just go in here and do a little detail. I think it's too thin, but might be that's pretty cool, but it doesn't matter. I, I wanna do something, come on, click. Oh, let me just choose the white one because it's accidentally clicking the big gray thing. There it is. So stroke, as you can see, the stroke is squared at each end, this particular stroke. And so if I go into my stroke library, write it right here. It's also up here if you don't have it all by default. Stroke is inside the windows. Let me turn it back on. Window down here, stroke. So here's my stroke uh, window. And we can do a lot of things. Stroke has so many possibilities. It's, it's so great. But just for this example, the cap. The caps are square, as you can see. It says cap here, but I can round it. And so it makes it kind of a pill shape or sausage shape. And this thing, it just kind of extends the cap out, but it's not that important. So this is the shape um, and I'm basically, oh, and I wanna increase the width. So let's look at proportions. That could be a nice little thin um, LED, but I'm gonna beef it up. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So there is an asset. And I'm gonna reuse that asset multiple times on this this, this, and this. But each one I'm gonna modify a little bit just to suit the design. Um, now, I'm gonna go a little bit advanced here. I'm gonna copy and paste this. I mean, actually, I'm not, I'm gonna not copy and paste, but I'm gonna grab everything. I think I grabbed it with this black guy. Okay, there. Okay, it's all grabbed. And I wanna duplicate it. It's easy to copy, paste, control C, control V. That's easy. But what I really like to do is I like to grab it, and shift, alt, command, drag. Oh, I need to grab the whole thing. Shift, alt, command. And I just like to duplicate it that way. I don't know why it's, at least it's neat, I'm keeping everything in line. So I'm gonna, make a, I'm gonna make a couple of options for this volume knob. So this is a little bit flat, this gray. So I'm gonna put a gradient in there. And how I'm gonna do that is there's a tool over here it's this tool, this is a gradient tool. It could be underneath, oh no, it's a standalone tool. In Photoshop, there's a paint bucket underneath, but in Illustrator, it's just this thing. So you click on that, double click on it. Oh wait, just click on it. Okay, so what should happen is a gradient panel box should, should pop up. That should, but sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just warning you, sometimes you'll double click this. Let me try again, double click. It does crop up, but sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why but in case it doesn't, and you're like, 
you you click the crap out of that thing and it's not coming it's just like where the hell is it and you're looking very closely making sure there's nothing you're like moving this checking underneath like is it hidden underneath or is it on my other screen well just it's probably not there so just go to window and go to gradient okay there's my gradient so you see my circle inside is uh selected and if i just click here just right in here it's going to oh, it's going to give me a gradient now just you just have to click on that bar but what happened for me is it did the outline right here it did the outline i don't want the outline even though that looks cool it's going to be a cool reflection i'm going to use that later but I don't want it to be, I want it to be the fill. So I'm going to click this little guy to reverse that. So now the fill is the gradient, as you can see, and it's already starting to look 3D. And I, since I reversed it, now the outline is, um, is gray, which I'm not too worried about right now. So I've got a gradient here. Now I want to adjust that gradient. So I'm going to, oh, now here's the trick. Whatever is on top, in this case, the stroke, if this is on top, that's what you're working with. And if I were to mess around with the gradient here, it would start putting gradients into the line. But I really want to work with the fill, this thing, and I want to play with the gradient. So I got to put that on top. So that's how you activate it. And, and as you can see, there's a line here. I can adjust the gradient. But gradient, I'm just going to, I have the gradient tool selected. And I'm going to start here and then drag it down. I'm holding shift, so it's perfectly 90 degrees, and I'm pulling it down. So now we get a real natural kind of bevel. Bevel. Um, so the light is coming from above, and now it's kind of got a, like a dome shape to my volume knob. And this little guy, so this is the this is this is the whole thing, but this gray thing, this gray outline, you can see it. It looks kind of cool, actually. It looks like a ambient light reflection. So you know what, I'm gonna leave it. I'm cool with that. Okay, so I've got one volume knob. Now I can do multiple, let's just insert this and see what it looks like. Control, I, I'm grabbing it all and I'm grabbing it all. If grabbing it all, you can use either the black thing, the black arrow or the white arrow. It doesn't matter. As long as you're grabbing everything, you're gonna grab everything. So I got it and I'm gonna Wait a sec, I might even be able to do more stuff. We'll get to that in a second. All right, I'm gonna put it into, uh, oh, by the way, I'm holding Alt right now. I'm holding Alt and you can see I'm copying the whole volume knob. So I always have original copy here. I always make copies. So I'm holding Alt and I'm, and I'm gonna put it into place. There it is. And I'm gonna reduce the size of it by going to the black arrow. Um, I can control everything. That's the only way I can control the size issue um, is the black arrow. These guys, the white ones won't, won't control it. You have to use the black one. And if I hold shift, I can keep it all in proportion and proportionally place that volume knob in my, um, on, on one of my uh, amplifiers. Okay, I, I, I put it on. So notice, and I noticed that there's some issues. Um, the issue is, Notice this original piece. And in the back, I started off with a black, uh, a black circle. So, and then, but you lose that black circle in here. So I realized I better put a gradient on that black circle. So this is what I'm gonna click on that black circle. I know that I'm dealing with the black circle because it's this black thing here, this black color swatch thing. I'm gonna, oh, I'm just gonna click on that. So it comes onto the top. If I were to click this button, it would change that, change it to the outline, but I don't want that. But I just want this to be on top, so I'm actively working with it. So it's black, I can't see it in this black shape, so I'm gonna put a gradient in this too. Simply, my gradient panel is up already. I'm gonna put a gradient in there because now I'm, I, I'm going to do another gradient. Um, what am I gonna do? Oh, I'm going to select the gradient tool. I'm gonna go up and down. So now it looks really 3D. Um, it's, we're starting to get some 3D elements with a very simple white to black gradient. But in this case, no, not in this case, I'm gonna be realistic. So the light is obviously coming from above, 
but this surface would be it wouldn't be white. This would be white on this surface because it's hitting directly 90 degrees of the sunlight. But I want to make this one a little bit different, this inner one. So okay, I'm in the gradient. Instead of white, it's two extremes, too contrasty. I double click on the white, and now I can slide and adjust that particular little to make it look more subtle and not so contrasty. Um, if I wanted to adjust the color of this one, I could as well. Actually, you know, I'm going to go hardcore render. Maybe it's too early for this, but here's a little trick, ambient light. So what I did was <laughs> I just added a new color swatch on here. Although, watch this. That instantly adds a lot of boom shack attack. That translated means awesome. OK. It's kind of got an ambient thing going on. So maybe it's cool. I think it's too harsh. Let me just turn the black up a little bit more. Double click on that thing, and I'm going to turn the black up. And I'm getting a little too nitpicky, to be honest, at this point. But I do want to show you. <coughs> okay, let me grab this knob and move it out of the way. I selected everything. It's much easier with this black uh, arrow. Um, hold Shift and click on the background, and it gets rid of anything you click if you hold Shift. And let's put this guy in, and it's going to look way better, I guarantee it. There. Um, and holding shift to keep it all in proportion. Bring it down. There, I've got a little volume knob. And it's kind of 3D. And I can use this asset. Now, this is a real asset. Now, I'm going to show you what I need. I'm going to get rid of this. I don't need that. So I've got a volume knob on that guy. Let's do, OK, I'm going to. Duplicate it by Control, you know, Alt and Shift, duplicating it. So let's use that asset again. I've already got all the 3D elements, but this time I'm going to make this little arrow green. Um, so I, I clicked on it with the little guy with the um, white, white um, arrow, and instead of red, I'm going to make it green. So I double click on the the, the line because it's just a stroke. Let's make it aqua. Let's make it kind of a funky blue, light electric blue. OK, now it's that. And instead of, uh, instead of that shape, I think I want to make it just a circle. So you know what? I'm going to just delete it because I just, I'm, I'm getting ideas as I go. Grab the circle. There. Um, and that's going to be more in keeping. Well, let's just see. And this is going to be more in keeping for this design. So let's just grab that and see what it looks like. So that asset, I've already got two, two uses out of that one asset. So I saved myself a bunch of time. This guy is very squarey. So you know what? As cliche as it is, instead of a circle, I'm going to put a square in there um, just to keep it in you know, the same style. In fact, actually, I've never seen square LEDs. Might be innovative. Oh, it's outlined, so let's just reverse that. OK. So this is a square LED, but I don't want it sharp, sharp, sharp corners. I want it um, a little bit rounded corners. So with the white arrow, and you might even be able to use the white plus, but OK, white arrow. I'm going to click in there, and so I've got these little corner pieces where I can just easily just round off the corners. OK. So there's my, it's going to be my LED. Now let's go a little bit further with this little LED. Let's indent it. Let's, it's, it's, so firstly, material separations. This is obvious. I don't mean to say obvious in a patronizing way, but I guess it, it is because this is a transparent, clear blue plastic. Meanwhile, this could be metal. So, or it could be another plastic, but anyway, it's black. Right, so you, you separate your materials with an outline. So right now, as it stands, there is no outline, but there would be an outline in real life. So I'm going to go into this line tool and just choose a black outline. Black might be too harsh, but for now, it's going to be fine. Oh, and I choose white. I don't know how I did that. Double click and then double, go down here. Bar extreme, bottom left is black. And it's obviously way too, way too, uh, that that line to be realistic. So I'm going to stroke one point and just scroll down here and you can adjust the size of your stroke. But I'm going to go super thin. There we go. 
So now I've got the material separation, but this, what are we like for time? Good. I will have a break in a sec. And I know I'm going through quick and heavy, but let me just turn through this. Oh, so just to add some finesse, I want that, uh, I want that LED countersunk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on it, control copy, control, control B, which means paste behind. So B, it's behind there, you can't see it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the black arrow right here, grab one of the corners, holding shift and option, alt, I'm gonna hold it. So I've got a shape for my bezel. Now you'll see where I'm coming from in a second. Let's just grab this guy and I'm gonna take off the black outline and I'm gonna bring the, the fill up on top and I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna go to gradient again. So I'm gonna click on that. Hopefully it turns into a gradient. Oh, it doesn't, of course. So what I have to do is click on the gradient tool and just somehow click on, click on this and it's just used by default, the previous one, the previous gradient and I don't want that. Um, what I want is actually a default gradient and this is the most default you can get in your swatches right here. This is the most default black or white. And so you can, come on, I just want a black and white one. Come on guys. Now you're really making me mad. Okay, I don't know what the hell's going on, but anyway, gradient. You bastards, of course they want to mess with me. This is on top, whatever. God damn it, I just want that thing to be freaking gray, black and white. All right, well, whatever, I'll have to do it manually, but I guess it's a good learning thing. So I want, the sunlight is coming 90 degrees directly above. So I'm gonna change this gradient to go up and down like this. Now, right now, I need to flip it because I want the reflection to be white down here, not up here. So what I'm gonna do in, in the gradient tool right here, I'm going to check this little guy, this little hidden guy right here. And this is very useful because there, I'm flipping it. So let's just zoom out and see what this thing looks like. It starts to get the impression that it is inset somewhat with this because, you know, you know the rules, you know, shadows and, and light. But it needs a little bit more extreme. So I'm going to double click on this gray, which is currently that, and I'm going to make it blacker. But not fully black, but a little bit more. So I really can get that. And then also um, the white to really just pop off the, the thing a little bit more. All right, now let me zoom out and see what that looks like. So there, it kind of gives the impression that it's inset. So I'm gonna use this for this asset. Oh, and another thing. So here, this is that black, this is the gradient and it's white to black. It's too extreme from black to white, that is extreme contrast and it's too much. And I can see it over here. It's just too much, um, unless it's Chrome or something. So what I'm gonna do is with this guy, I'm gonna correct it and double click on this white and I'm gonna make it a little bit less white. So it just gives it a little bit more of a kind of a realistic look. And then I'm gonna get rid of this outline because it looks cool on some stuff, but not. In, I don't want it through here. So, okay, here's my new volume knob. Okay, let's put it in the squarey one because I've got a square design right in here and I'm just following all the cliches of design and matching up those shapes. Maybe this goes in the middle. Okay, but I still got my asset. Notice how I duplicated it because I can keep using this asset. I have one more thing down here in Xbox shape, but I hate it. I'm not using it. I'm gonna do something else I'm gonna do I'm gonna do another shape. Let's just see what I can do. You know what, I'm gonna do a perfect square. I'm gonna do a square. Maybe you could stack these things side by side instead of up and down. So this is gonna be a square hi-fi box. And I am gonna round, round the corners a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go into this. I can either go to the white one. I think I go to the white one. I mean, the white plus, no. 
I cannot do the, the white one plus. We'll get into the white plus later, the white arrow plus later. But for now, click on this and click in there. And now I've got my little um, little uh, corner jobbies. And so I can round the corners. And this is going to be tight round, round corners. Let me just tell you something about these corners. So I'm using the white arrow. If I click in here, it's going to activate all four corners. So what if I don't want all four corners to be done, uh, to be rounded? I just click on the, I mean, I, you can click on the corner or you can drag around that corner. And those are the only two that I want to be um, activated. These two are not. And now I can just drag one and round the corner, which actually might be nicer for this design. The top is rounded, the bottom is square. Uh, okay, so this is, those are my, so I need a volume knob for this guy. Now, what can I do? I think the square, the square one I just did, right here is more suitable for this because I did that square LED. So I'm, I'm going to my black uh, black uh, arrow, grab all of that and hold shift to get rid of that. Um, I don't want the whole face. I just want the knob. And I'm not even gonna copy and paste it because I know it's gonna be different. Um, it's in there, but it's underneath. But before I click on anything, it's still active. I go, um, oh, control X, click on that and control F, paste in front, F for front, B for behind. Um, so anyway, there I've got my square knob with my square LED, so that matches. So everything's kind of matching so far. Um, and you know what? I, I, I could, well, I'll get into that shortly. So, I'm getting into this a little bit. This was a mistake, but it looks like it's kind of a chrome, it's kind of a chrome polished silver rim. Well, you know what? I think I could do that to this. I think I could, it's given me an idea. So maybe I make a border around this with that same silver, um, silver type look. So I've got, I've got this shape. How am I gonna make a rim around it? Well, this is how I'm gonna do it. Currently it's black and but I'm gonna put a stroke around it. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna click on that. So that's on top, my stroke is on top. And I want a stroke to be the same width as this, you know, to keep it all matching the same form language. So stroke, let's give it a color, um, a neutral color, like a, a middle gray, just a middle gray, just so I can see what the hell's going on. And I can see my, my stroke and it's not thick enough. I want it to be the same thickness as this. So stroke. So I'm going to go into my stroke uh, dialog box and just jack it a little bit. That's too much. Um, so I'm going to go in there and I have to edit it. 1.5, let's say 1.5. By the way, I don't know why it says points. I set the whole document up for uh, centimeters, but or I don't know. I don't know if I didn't do it. OK, tab. So instead of hitting enter, which sets it, hit, hit tab because it gives you a preview tab. So there, tab, but it's still activated. If you were to hit enter, I don't know what would have happened. Crash your system. No, not really. So, okay, now I've got a nice aluminum bezel that kind of matches this. But you know what? It actually needs to be a little bit thicker just to really match this. So instead of 1.5 thickness of line, I'm going to say 1.75. And I am getting a little granular here, but now it matches at least. All right, so I've got my aluminum bezel. What time is it? It's 9.41, we finish at 11.15, I think. Let's have a little break. I'm going like gangbusters. So let's have a 10 minute break if you don't mind. Is that good with you all? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Hey, we'll be back. It's 10.40, we'll come back at 10. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's 9.41. We'll come back at um, 9.50.
Great. Yeah. Okay, press record. So, uh, there's a few things I wanted to, okay, there, there. So you can see how quickly I could create some concepts of this HiPy component. Um, now, let me just, let me just give you another example of why these assets are so good and how it's so quick. So, okay, let me just take this guy, this knob, volume knob on the, this amp. Okay, there, I, I'm gonna copy it, control. Actually, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna press control and all that stuff, I'm just gonna grab it, move it over, um, press, I think it's just a habit, but option or alt there. This is gonna be the bass and, and treble controls there. And I'm gonna reduce the size of it. And that's why these assets are very useful because I just built that. It took me, what, five, tip, five minutes to make that, but it's saving me a bunch of time. So here I've got the um, a base and I'm gonna keep that, I'm gonna copy this again. And click uh, Alt, so base and treble. So base is red in my opinion. Trouble would be, uh, I just want them, it's kind of hard to select lines sometimes. So base is red, trouble is blue, let's just say. So I'm gonna change that stroke into blue. Right now I'm, I'm this on top, so it's red. I'm gonna choose a nice little kind of hot, hot blue, electric blue. And so I've got base and trouble pretty clearly labeled. It's like hot and cold. But this guy, I'm gonna change the color to this to be green for the volume. So let's go green. Okay, so that's an example of how like using, uh, using these assets over and over and over again saves you sh a lot of time. All right, let me put a brand on this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put a, a Polk Audio, it's a hi-fi brand, and I'm gonna put Polk Audio brand in here. So I'm gonna go on the internet and I'm gonna type in Polk Audio logo. And you can find logos of everything that's mainstream brand. Polk Audio images. And I'm just gonna find the highest resolution. When you're searching for stuff, I'm gonna do a thing called live trace on this, oops. Um, you really, and when you're finding images on the internet for your design, try to find the highest resolution. Because, so um, Polk Audio, uh, their logo images, yes, go to settings. Oh no, not settings, sorry, tools, um, size, and say large. That's gonna be the highest resolution, biggest images. And I'm good with this one, I'm gonna, select it and I'm gonna drag this thing. You can, if you drag it straight onto Illustrator, you turn off Illustrator, you turn it back on, that image might not be there anymore. So best off is if you drag it onto your desktop. Okay, it's on my desktop now. And I'm gonna put it in Illustrator. So I just gotta find it on my desktop. Bridge, desktop. Where is that thing? Uh, I can zoom out so I can see better. That, oh, there it is, Polk. It is on my desktop, drag it onto my Illustrator. And now it should remain on, should be, it should, oops, should be, uh, should stay on my page because I have to put it on my hard drive first and don't put it straight in the software because it won't store on your hard drive and you can't, I don't know. That's a little bit in depth. So, okay, now, it's pretty massive. This, by the way, this little line here is my art artboard, my uh, 11 by 17 artboard. So it's way bigger, but it doesn't matter for this point. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna live trace this thing. So there's my image, and this is a brilliant tool for many, many things. And I can't demonstrate them all at this point, but it's clicked. Um, now, by default, by clicking on a pixel image inside your Illustrator, it should, by default, give you this icon up here. Um, uh, not icon, but this toolbar, whatever it's called. Um, and so there's this image trace here, but in case you don't have image trace up there, I don't think it's in here. Um, a, B, C, D, C, D, E, H, I. Oh, image trace, yes. Okay, you can click image trace and it'll bring up a dialog box. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna image trace this thing. 
oh, oh, here it is, Trace. Trace, you should probably remember this pretty easily. So, <laughs> Trace, uh, <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna trace it. So what happens is I, I press trace, and what it's done is it's traced it, but it's, it's um, and it, by default, it makes everything black, which is fine. Um, oh, but the thing is to get it in, it's still, it's just a filter right now. It's purely a filter and you cannot manipulate anything. But what you have to do is you have to formalize this filter into an actual vector. So what you do is you press expand. Okay, and now you can see these little blue lines by the way, if, where's my layers, layers, layers? It's hard to see these blue lines. I'm just gonna go into my layers dialog box. There are layers. And if you want to change the, 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 the line color, the, the, I don't know what you call it, but you know, the path color, just double click on this, double click on the layer, double click on the layer. By the way, layers are important, just like in Photoshop. We'll get to it later. Layer, uh, oh. Just double click on this little color, or maybe you can go down here and choose a different color. Red's gonna be easier for me. So, and click okay. And now I can see my lines better. So now you can see it's formally, it's formally a vector now. So I'm just gonna delete. There's faster ways of doing this, but just so you learn the basics. I'm gonna delete that white. So I'm just putting a little thing there, delete the white. Delete the white inners of the O's and the P's. And I'm gonna get rid of the TM. All right, so now I have a really nice vector art of that logo. Oh, it didn't get rid of the whites. There's multiple layers of live trace stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click that because there's a big white layer underneath all of that, so there. But now I have the Hulk Audio thing um, logo. It's all perfect, more or less. I'm gonna keep this red. So I'm, I'm drawing a box around it, just, uh, you know, drawing, just activating it. And I want to turn it red because I do want to keep that because I think I might make that an LED that lights up in the background. So I click that. All it did was give me a red outline, as you can see right here, red outline. And I'm going to flip it there. And I do want a black outline because this is going to be uh, like a piece of clear it's going to be a material transition. So now it should all be grouped by default because when you live trace it, it is grouped by default. It's just one thing. Let's put it in here. And let's put this logo in each. This is another asset, which I'm going to use. If I'm doing a lot of Hulk stuff, I'll be able to use this asset multiple times and I'll put it into here. I can't see it. So you know what, I'm gonna turn each one of these guys a little bit, not black. I'm gonna turn them a little bit gray. So there they all are. I've selected them all holding shift instead of black. Just, you can't even tell the difference. It's gonna be a little bit of a lighter black, just a little bit. Okay, oops, these guys need to go in the back. <laughs> I'm gonna like, select them, control, shift, Hold it, control X, click on this thing. I want it to go behind. These are the feet, control B behind. So those are my feet. Okay. Uh, all right, so I've got my Polk Audio logo. I'm gonna make it smaller. Oh, I selected too much. And I'm just gonna simply duplicate that on each one. There, and I'm just holding Alt, Command, Shift, I guess I'll put that one up here. And one more time, this one, I'm gonna put this one in the middle. There's a way to make sure everything's perfectly squared in the middle, but that will come. I'm just trying to give you an overview. So there, I've got my logo sorted out, got my knob sorted out. I need one more knob on this guy. And I think I said it's gonna be the square one. Oh no, that is a square. Okay. In this case, I'm gonna make this uh, uh, a rectangle to match my rectangular uh, silhouette. So I'm gonna select the, the square thing. Uh, the, no, no, sorry, the white arrow. Grab all of that, but minus this. And so you have to just kind of click around and figure out how to get rid of those. Hold on, let's try one more time. Click in the middle twice. 
And you just have to play with this. It's kind of different each time. But there I have my uh, thing, my LED. And I'm going to choose the black arrow tool to like stretch it out. And I'm not pressing shift in this case because I just want to do this. So it will suit my, my kind of rectangular shape. I'm going to copy that. Uh, well, grab it all, hold just command option shift and put it in here. Oh, I'm not going to hold shift because I want to be free, but I am going to duplicate it, which is alt or option. So there, maybe I put it in the middle. All right, so I'm really liking this bezel that goes around. So maybe, oh, let's put in some, okay, you know what? Each one of these have their own distinctive little icon. So I'm gonna go in here and work on this a little bit. So currently, this little thing is, is an outline, so I need to change it to a full shape. There we go. It's a full shape. And I'm going to take that thing, Control C, Control B, paste behind. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm holding Shift and Alt. And uh, just to make it perfectly squared, but it's uh, you can't see it because they're both the same color, but this time I'm going to put in a gradient, so make sure that uh, this panel is on top above the line. And I'm going to go over here and choose that default black and white. There's a default black and white, just like what, how we did to give the old light impersonation. Um, oh, yeah, in the gradient tool, I'm going to go up and down. So I could, I could either change it 90 degrees. So now it's, this is actually correct because the shadow's here. I want it poking in and the light is there, but it's just too harsh. Let me reduce that black and white a little bit. So click on that white one and just reduce it down. Right now it's giving me RGB and I don't want that. I want grayscale. And I, this is another thing. I love working grayscale because you get the forms without having to dick around with uh, colors all the time. Grayscale. Uh, so I clicked on grayscale with this little arrow up here. It gives you options for the colors. So grayscale. And now I'm just going to slide the slider over to make it not so obvious. There we go. OK, there's my little LED. Don't forget the material separation. So I'm going to select that. And I'm going to put a black outline around it. So click on that to make sure it's active. I'm on top. Black outline. So the color will be black now. But it's way too thick, obviously, so I need to go to my stroke because these are called strokes and you use the stroke a lot. So I'm going to click in here and say 0.25. Okay, I'm cool with that. I don't know why I did that. So wait a sec. All right. So there's, what was I going to do? Oh, oh, okay, okay. I remember what I was going to do. So there we, there we have, um, I'm going to select that, that volume knob. And I'm going to duplicate it over here. I'm pressing Shift and Alt to duplicate it. And I'm going to reduce the size of this. Maybe a little bit bigger. And then do another one here. And this time, I'm going to, once again, follow that same philosophy of the base is red. Put that on top. So I'm going to make that red. That ties in nice with the pull, pull logo. Um, and this guy is going to be blue. That's cool. But then I want this guy to be green. So that's all cool. Let's make that green, maybe a bright, obnoxious green. And a yellow color. That's kind of cool. All right. So everything's in keeping. This, we're going to do the same thing with this guy. Let's do something a little different. What's going to happen on this? Maybe this is just pure raw. Um, I honestly don't know yet, but let's just grab that, take away that thing, and duplicate this. Yes, I'll put the there and reduce the size of it. There, my base and volume. I guess there's a balance in there too, but I. So let's change these colors up. Base is red. Let's go red. 
Drop those blue. Oh, this one's going to be green. Let's try a different color green. Let's try something like that. Okay. There we go. We're starting to get some pretty good concepts. Well, at least they're not necessarily good concepts, but at least they, you know, they express ideas very efficiently. Let's go in here and let's start labeling this stuff. And I did forget the left right channel. So let's move this over. You know what? I think I might just grab this. So the, the reason why I like Illustrator, another reason why I like Illustrator so much is because you can really figure out your proportions without having to sketch everything. So, you know, you can really get good proportions by playing with these vector art things. Okay, so this one's going to be, tro uh, sorry, sorry, balance. So let's just change that color to, I don't even know, let's say yellow, let's say orange. I might be getting too colorful in here, but it is starting to look childish, whatever. Let's start putting in some fonts. So suitable fonts. I'm, I'm, I clicked on the, the font right here. You don't really use the rest of these things. You do, but not really. Um, it's a little advanced. So click on here. And that's the default thing. So I'm going to just say um, base, B-A-S-S, -E all caps, find a suitable font. So highlight it. I don't even think you need to highlight it. In fact, it's nicer if you don't highlight it. You have this. Move it over here. Oh, oh God. Black arrow. Move it over over here. So base. Um, let's just move this thing out of the way. Okay. So um, oh, okay. So just just by clicking on on your uh, text thing, it automatically activates this menu bar up here, and you can use this very nicely. And well, how I'm really going to use it is um, finding the right font. So let's find a font that would be suitable for this square thing. By the way, you download fonts out the butt everywhere you get free look at all these fonts that i've gotten um since i deal with a lot you know the jeep stuff you know i need this type of sporty stuff so you know downloaded all this got tons of got lots of um assets but let me find one that suits the cleanness of the steel one that's what i mean square one that's what i'm working on right now so let's just find something that's a little too heavy but something that's basically i'm thinking of helvetica you know i'm just going to go helvetica a b c d e F G H Helvetica. Just keep it super clean. Helvetica heavy. No, it's going to be delicate. So I'm going to go one of these. Just that's that's nice. Okay, just a clean Helvetica base and holding shift to keep everything in proportion. I'm going to just make it small and I'm going to make it white. So right now it's black. This is on top. Make sure this is on top. Double click. Let's make it white. Okay, there's my base knob. Uh, um, just uh, command, option, shift, so everything stays nice and level. Trouble. So I'm going to double click on it, and it will highlight it. T R E B B L E. Is that trouble, or is it T R? No, it's not T R B L E. Or is it T R B E L? No, it's T R B L E. T R B L E. Okay. Trouble. And I'll just eyeball it and put it in the middle. And then balance. Over here, same, duplicating it with shift. Um, B A L A N C E, balance. These are all too big. They're just not proportionally. I want it small and discreet. So I, I selected all of them. And I'm just going to reduce the size of that font. It's looking better. Yeah, I want it really subtle. Small looks good. I just have to reposition them. But holding shift keeps them all lined up. I'm just eyeballing them though. Okay, so this is looking like a high class piece of equipment, except for these colors, which is very childish, but okay, let's drop some shadows in here. So I'm saying the light's coming perfectly from above. I would like to actually turn the light a little bit to the left. And I guess it's doable. All right, let's try this. Okay, I'm, I'm selecting that. I'm selecting uh, the things where the gradients are because I'm gonna say the, the sunlight's, in fact, let's do something cool. Let's put in a background. I'm gonna go to a new layer. 
uh, layer, 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 layer. There we go. Layer, new layer. I'm going to move that layer underneath. I'm dragging it underneath because this is going to be a background. So there, I've got a blank layer underneath. And I'm going to choose a big square. Just going to put a, a big square in here. Oh, it's by it's already black and white. I don't know. It's maybe because I selected this. It, it really doesn't matter. But anyway, this is this is my gradient. Um, but and here's my gradient tool. I'm going to just take away that, move it over here. So and I and I'm instead of it being directly up and down, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna change the direction of it. So I want my light to come from the left here, up here. So I'm gonna change that gradient. So now it, the light source looks like it's over here and the dark side is here. But you know what? I'm gonna take this thing and give each one its own little box. Back, background. And this is just to help. This is just going to, actually before I do that, let's fix this. Um, Turn down the opacity. Okay, so if your transparency is not here, you can play with transparency, which is very, very powerful. Window, in case you don't have transparency already turned on. Go to transparency. Oh no, I shoot, I press transform and then transparency, transform, transparency. And I'm just gonna turn this down. I don't wanna mess around with all the gradient stuff. I'm just gonna turn this thing down. So transparency window open and you just turn down transparency. There's not much to do down here, just you, but you will use this. So there, it's just a little background, you know me and my backgrounds. So there, I'm now I can duplicate this for each one to help give it a little 3D. And it's always gonna be a constant reminder about where my light's coming from. Okay, now let me try first one. I'm gonna select so right now, my light is not according to how I want it. It's 90 degrees. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to click click the exterior one. And I'm going to do that with all of these on this particular um, module. There. There. So I've got them all selected. And just so I can do it in one move, in fact, you know, I can do all of them. Might as well. So that's the top one. And I'm going to do this one. I can do all of this. I can switch everyone's light lighting at the same time. So I'm just going to try to remember to select all of these. If I miss one, I can always go back. <gasps> OK. I've got them all selected, all my knobs. and. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate each one of them. Now, there's a little bit of an advanced move, but it's you'll, it's very useful and you will start to use it. So what right. I do is I go to object and I go to transform and I go to this thing down here. It's called transform each. And it's a little hidden gem, this little guy, transform each. So select that. So this gives me a dialog box. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna keep everything in the same position. Everything's gonna be but all I'm doing is rotating um, everything. So, okay, here, now let's just see what happens when I just rotate a little bit. Okay, now my light source is too far to the left. Let me just rotate this around. Just kind of play with it until it looks right. There we go. Um, now my light source is according to how I want it and press okay. Okay, so now all my knobs are within the right lighting system. Okay, so, so it actually adds a lot of realism. Now, the reason why I wanted to tell you about this was because we're gonna do some shadows. Let's just use the square one because this is the one I'm kind of finishing. Um, I'm gonna select the outer, the outer ring on my knobs. That one, that one, that one, that one, okay. So I'm gonna copy it, control C and copy behind, control B. It's, it's copy behind, you can't see it. With the cursor, oh, and right now it's got a gradient. I'm gonna make this full balloon black. Double click on this and then click over here, make it black. 
So we still can't see it because it's underneath, but I'm gonna use the arrow keys. I'm gonna press down. Oh, I don't know why I gave it a gradient, but it doesn't matter. At least I can see it very clearly. Um, so this will be a shadow. I'm gonna make this, do you want to disable? What, I don't, what? Oh, it's picking up my microphone. Anyway. Oh, those are going to be shadows. So instead of that color, I want it to be black. Well, why the hell are you not turning black then, huh? There. Let's go over here and let's try it. There's multiple ways of doing stuff. All right, there we go. So now I've got a very effective shadow and I've already added 3D to this guy. Um, and let's do the same for everything else there. Copy paste behind, control B, command B, and using the arrow key. Because arrow is sometimes easier. And I'm gonna change that to black. Let's go with this. There, so I've got that volume knob and I'll do it with these guys up here. Outer one. Um, control C, control V with the arrow tools, uh, the arrow buttons. And let's make them fully black. Go there, there. Something about, let me just mention something about subtleness. These yeah. knobs are not as sticking out, protruding as much as the volume knob. The volume knobs, I'm gonna really make it protruding out a lot more. So I'm gonna make the shadow deeper. So I'm just gonna move it out here. So it gives the impression that it sticks out more. And in this case, I think I'll do the same, but I'll move these guys in a little bit. And all I'm just doing is moving them. So, you know, I get a little bit of depth and that's fine. And, I, and finally, let's just do this one. So Illustrator is so fast, it's faster than sketching when you're doing this. You could have never sketched these three things in the two hours we've been doing this. So control copy. Control behind, um, make it black. Can't see it, but I'm gonna move it over. And this one's gonna be a taller knob. So there we go. So we've got some shadows. All right, cool. Uh, now, shadows, you can do so many cool things with this sucker. All right, let me just give you an example. Let's, I, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna explain what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you what, You'll, you'll understand what I'm doing, but I don't want to explain it. I want to show you what I'm going to do. Okay. Copy. Paste in front. Take off the gray rim. Move it down here. Okay, so you can't, so I moved, I moved the shape, I moved it over here and I'm going to Okay, I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, got that shape and I've got this shape. So hold on, um, let me think about this. Control copy, control front, that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I'm not gonna explain everything here. Control copy, control. Control F, that's just my silver. Okay, I will explain stuff. I just put my silver rim on a new layer. That's all I did. Uh, but I don't wanna exactly explain everything right now uh, because I just wanna show you. Okay, so I'm gonna be putting a shadow in here. So there and there, cut this out. There's a thing here that we use a hell of a lot. It's called Pathfinder. It's not, oh, there's Pathfinder right here, but just in case you need Pathfinder. And what this does is it's like Boolean or it's, it's uh, okay, let's just, it, what it does is it cuts stuff out. When you put things on top of each other, it cuts things out, you know, so there. Oh, shoot, that's, that's merge everything together. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna select this, control copy, control, 
control copy, control behind. I don't want that. So you can see it's just my silver piece there, but I don't want that silver piece. I want the gray. So I'm going to go up to this thing, give it a grayish color, dark gray. So now let's just put that silver lining up on the top. All right. So now what I've just kind of done is given that silver strip that goes around my, my hi-fi a shadow. So it's kind of like there's like a, I don't know, it's kind of bezeled out or something. Uh, okay, well, that was that was a really fun thing. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't explain shit about it. Um, but anyway, the shadows and, and using doing Illustrator is just very quick for this stuff. So I've managed to do that. Uh, let's try something else. Okay, let's, I don't, I just, I don't want to be old fashioned, but I guess I will be old fashioned. Just by doing this, I'm making the thing old fashioned because that's just old speaker. I mean, old feet on hi-fi, but I'm just thinking, all right, forget it. I'll be old fashioned. So I've got my feet. You can see the feet on my stereo. That's what I'm gonna do. So there, I'll move it inside a little bit. Just, it looks old instantly. I wanted clean, but I can't do much about it right now. So, yes, I, yes, I can, can do something. Yes, I can, I, you can do it, Brooke, you can do it. Anyway, let's just do this thing old fashioned way. So I want this, the feet to be round. So round feet. So let's put in a gradient in here. So right now it's just a rectangle, but if I go into, make sure this is on top, here, your fill is on top and let's go into gradient. Boom. So it automatically kind of gives it a gradient. Uh, it already starts to look round, but let's really make it look round. So I've got that. My gradient is here. Oh. So let's move the highlight, the core, into the middle. And on this side, we're adding the other side of the core. Um, I don't know what it's called. Double click on it, go black. Okay, you can see it starting to come to life. Um, and then, okay, let's just make it, you know, a little bit, a little bit more rendered. Um, double click on that and let's go white. So there, it now it, now it definitely looks like a can or a cylinder, you know, but it's too white, dark, white and black and stuff. So let's just chill this out a little bit. So instead of white, white, I'm gonna double click on that and give it more of a gray. So I'm gonna go into this grayscale, like I was showing before, slide this over. It's just too much. And also on this side, oh, gradient, it's too white. This is gonna be way more subtle. Something like that. Okay, so I've got a round foot, um, but it's going to need a shadow. So I'm just going to eyeball this and I'm just going to draw this with my pen tool. I'm just going to drop a shadow in there. And something like, and it doesn't matter what's going on up here. And I'm going to make that black. So the easiest default is just hit this little black and white thing that instantly turns it black and white. And then now I can mess with it. I can just say, I want that black. So there I just swapped the outline color and the, the fill, click on that guy, turn it off. So now I've got a nice shadow, but I'm gonna drop it into the back. I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna select that and control X, click on that. I want it to go behind control B. So now I've kind of got that shadow back there. It's not totally convincing, but I will make it convincing. Just because the it looks too, I'm just going to adjust this curve. And how I adjust the curve is select this white one without the plus, white arrow. Select that, bring it down because there's going to be a shadow a little bit more like that. And just, I don't know, maybe if I brought it all the way down. Oh, oh, I messed up. Let's just see what happens. Okay, I'm fine with that. So there, I've got a foot and it's rendered nicely. So I do have an idea for this. 
but let's just delete that. Let's just grab all of this. Oh, I need to grab it all. So I'm gonna use the, the black arrow. There, just drag it over. Now I have a concept that I just thought of. And this is, this is another reason why Illustrator gets so freaking awesome. I'm gonna duplicate this. I don't wanna ruin my concept. So I'm gonna copy that whole thing and drag it over, shift command. So it's like duplicated. This is my concept. So right now, this one is very uh, square, uh, flat. It looks obviously very flat, but this one, I'm gonna round off the corners. So I'm gonna move this over here, there, there. And I'm gonna get rid of the shadows because I have an idea. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this thing and I'm gonna make it rounded just like I rounded off these round feet. So there, so currently it's solid gray. I'm gonna bring that to the top and now I'm gonna mess around with my gradients. So let's just fill it with a default gradient because I don't wanna be biased with this one yet. There, we've got the gradient. Now let's mess around with the gradient. Let's do those, cor those cores and all that kind of stuff again. So here, the core is gonna be here. <gasps> oh, why did it do that? Sorry, I'm hiccuping like a beast. Why is it doing that? I don't know why it's doing that. I guess it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna click on this, uh, this one here and make it pretty black. Okay, and in fact, it's too black. Let's just double click on it and chill that thing out because I can see blatantly that it's too much grayscale. Chill that thing out a little bit. Okay. Now this one here, this is the core. Let's make that pretty white. Let's just turn that to grayscale. Let's turn up the white because the core is going to be, core is going to be here. And let's move that over. There, there is a very nice tool here. Where, now, where is it? Let's just see. There's a tool that, that saves a lot of time. Um, gradient. Okay. Now, it's hit or miss how you get this line here. But this line is basically this line. But it gives you perfect control about where you want your core. So here's, here's the core is going to be moved here. Okay. Um, and let's move this black over. So that's, that's one core. Let's put another core right in here. So I think if you click on this, there we go. I you just click on that white line or just under that white line. Let's just move that over and then another one here. And this one I'm gonna make a little bit white, double click on it, make it uh, grayscale. Oh, I can't move it. All right, so anyway, a little bit, little bit wider, but not too much. You want to be subtle. Oh, no. there. And finally, I'm going to add another one back here, which is a, a black black. Double click and make that really blackish. Okay, this one's a little too obnoxious, so let's turn this white down. It's a little too much. I want a soft finish. So now I've given the impression. That I've got a rounded, a rounded version of the same one. So you know, I've, I've got kind of two pretty strongly different concepts, uh, and I want this foot to match this. So I'm going to have to manually do this. I'm going to have to click on that and try to match up the the grays because I want it to be kind of one mold, something like that. But I have to make it really as close as I can. Being really subtle about it there. Okay, that's cool. So I and, and I don't want any black outlines. I wonder why there's a line in there. Oh, it's only because I think I what what is that? Control Z. I don't know why there's a line, and I don't really want it, but whatever. Well, maybe I do. All right, so let's match this one up too. So I click on that. It's on the gradient on the top. Now, I want the core to be shifted over a little 
no, no, it's fine. It's fine, but I want this way more subtle. Well, maybe I do want it shifted over. I honestly don't know. Let's just see what happens. But I definitely want these blacks a little bit lighter just to kind of match it up, just eyeballing it. That one and this one. Hold on, that has black, gray, black. Oh, let's just turn this, just turn this down. I think it'll do. Just kind of eyeball this. I'm, I don't exactly know exactly what I'm doing, but let's see. Okay, I'm basically cool with that. Now let's drop a shadow in here. So if I were to drop a shadow in here, it would start about here and it would go down here. It might even go all the way here, but it would be kind of curved like that. There. And let's go black. Click on that, reverse it, and that's one shadow. So that's one shadow. We can we can little we can if you're really being a reflection master, you can you can tweak this. But just for argument's sake, I'm gonna leave it. All right, so that's the second concept of this. Um, I do have to make a modification because it bothers me, but proportionally it's not gonna work. These two guys. Get rid of all of this stuff. Just click on stuff you don't need. And I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna move it. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna select all of this knob stuff. This is gonna be a completely different concept. Get rid of all of that. Click on the line. Get rid of this overall. There we go. I'm just gonna move the whole thing over. It's all gonna be very concentrated inside these uh, radii. There we go. It's, it will be a slightly different concept, perhaps. So there, I've got another. So you could you can just pop out so many different ideas. Um, okay, so let's use some assets. Let's use these guys again. These these legs. So copy, and I I have to have legs on these things or feet. So I'm gonna put these in. Uh, control B, oh wait, wait. Uh, control X, control B behind. So there's a little little leg. It's a little weirdly proportioned. And I want it to be much smaller. I mean, I want it to be way thinner. And then let's just duplicate that over. So there, I've got some legs on that. Just dirties up the whole design though. Screw that, that doesn't look good. I have a better idea. I'm gonna get rid of those because it just doesn't look, the, the roundy ends don't look good with those little, um, with those square feet. So I'm just gonna use a simple ellipse and just make it little feet like this. That's way more subtle and more in keeping. Okay, so those are its feet, that looks way better. This guy here, I don't know what to do with it. Um, honestly, I don't really care either. So what else? Time is 10.35, we have 45 minutes. All right, I was busting out a lot. Ugh. Does anyone have any questions for me or are you getting it or am I going too fast? Tell, give me some feedback, please. Or requests. I think this is a really good pace, mm -hmm. but a lot of this was pretty uh, new for me, um, so it will be really fun messing around for uh, the next homework assignment. Yeah, it really is, and I'm not going to be specific about what you do for homework. Just do something. Um, 
And I would suggest, I think it's really relevant because somebody who's Max, are you with us? Max, you are here. Um, I'm thinking about your walls and it's very human related. Okay, check this out then. This is relevant for you, Max, anyone else who's doing the interior stuff? I think Kat. I don't know. Oh, 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 here's something I wanted to share with you. I forgot. Let me stop my, and it's not a big deal, but it's kind of interesting and it'll definitely um, be interesting for you. So I get portfolios coming in. Let me share my desktop now. I get portfolios coming in. They went an internship and whatever. So I got this one from a kid from Italy. Uh, let's see. Let's just see where it is. Um, it's, it's an Italian dude. It's just recent. I just got it yesterday. Oh, Summit Mina. All right, this is the application. Uh, oh, here's a PDF. And so, you know, his stuff's pretty good. He's actually pretty good. He's just a good all-rounder. Um, but I wanted to show you one project that he did. He did a lighting thing. Oh, here. So this is this is his lighting design. It is what it is. It's nothing great, but you know, whatever. Um, actually, there are some smart elements about this, considering he's using. Anyway, this is not my point about how he built this thing, even though it is smart because like he can slide it along a rail and rotate the light. You know, it's on this rail system, so it, that's smart. But that's not the smart thing. Smart thing was. Oh, this. So, so he has a, a set of LEDs. Here, let me show you. These are all LEDs. So they, they can each be independently colored. So, you know, here he, he has them set up. So, you know, he has a gradient. So one LED shining, you know, a darker color and then another one, you can, you know, you can do the American flag if you want to do red and white, or, you know, you can do the gay flag, you know, so, um, I thought that was a smart idea. And I really liked how he presented it, like, you know, with this uh, lightness volume and, and zero, 100% touch, touch and slide to control brightness. So I don't know, just, this is really cool. But then it's also kind of smart because, I don't know, there's, there's, he's, he's not bad. Having this cool, warm temperature adjustment as well. So I thought I'd share that with you. I thought it'd be very relevant for you guys, especially who was doing that. Um, that was you, Trace, that was doing the red um, therapeutics, muscle repair stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know, just, just an interesting take on this. So I did, did want to share that with you. That's what I've forgotten. So <clears throat> for, for what it's worth, okay, hey, check this out. Another thing I did notice about this guy's portfolio, look how well he laid this out. So. Um, he put his lamp on this desk thing, which is already cool. The desk is sitting there without legs, but notice how he put the light and it's all bullshit, of course. Oh, let me just stop this record because I'm not. Okay, let's do a, a variation. I really like the cleanliness. Uh, is somebody trying to come in? I keep hearing noises. All right, so anyway, I really like the cleanliness of this design. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it because I'm going to modify it. And I don't want to ruin this. So I'm going to copy it. Hey, by the way, if you're limited to page page size, like, like I am right now, this is 11 by 17. Get rid of that thing. Have the big 20-foot artboard. So you go to view, hide artboard. And now I don't have that artboard. So it's not for print. I can have so many ideas. And that's why on that logo thing I showed you, I filled that artboard up with loads of ideas and you're, it just opens your freedom. It opens just conceptually, conceptually, visually and mentally, just having this huge artboard, it's like, damn, I can do so many ideas. So that's how you can get away from that um, paper size. Okay, so let's put a bevel around the edge of this thing. So maybe a chrome because I've kind of got chrome around the knobs. So let's put a chrome bezel around it. There it is, great. Um, I got it. 
outlined. No, so let's give it a little bit of a, wait, wait, wait. Um, okay, let's just outline it. So I'm gonna click on the outline thing, double click and give it a gray color to suggest metal. Okay, I can't see it, but it is there. But I'm gonna make it a little bit, I'm gonna make it a little bit wider to, to match, just give it a little bit more. So um, I'm going to stroke, oh, stroking is here. Let's just increase the thickness of this guy. And just zoom out, see if it looks proportional. By the way, that red, this is a little bit of an advanced move, but that red um, path is, it's, 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 I can't see what I wanna see. So you press control H and it's still active, but it doesn't show you that line. So you can see more clearly what you're working with. And I guess that's gonna be a nice bezel. So I'm cool with that. And it kind of looks like a bezel already, but let's do this. Let's copy this thing. Copy and paste behind. And I'm gonna take off the bezel because it's behind, you can't see what's going on. So, but it, it, it's without a bezel. Let's take this one. This is on top, let's delete. So you see uh, my background doesn't have bezel. Anyway, control Z. Now this time I'm gonna take off the fill. So now I have just a pure bezel. Let's just grab it. Oh, control H so I can actually see what I'm doing again. So there, I've got my bezel. It's just by copying and pasting and just keeping the line on one layer and on this layer, making it just the pure um, fill. All right, there we have it. So let's give this a rendering. So right now it's just a fat, thick path, three points thick. So let's let's make it into, let's let's outline the stroke. So very useful tool. You will use this so many times. So I think you go into object, go into path, go into outline stroke. And now it's an outline stroke. It's no longer a stroke. I can't edit it anymore really with the stroke. It's a full blown shape there. It's a full blown shape. So it doesn't matter. Let's move these little feet. Let's move them in the back. Control X, grab everything. I want it to go behind it. Control, uh, control B behind. And with the arrow keys, I'll just move it down. There we go. So I've got a bezel on this thing. Now let's render it. I've selected it and let's just go to the simple gradient, default gradient right here. So by default, the gradient goes from left to right. But in this case, I don't want it to go to left to right. I want it to go from that side to that side um, to really you know, help the, well, you know what I'm saying, uh, because the light's coming from the top left. All right, so right now the gradient is hardcore white and black. Let's put in the core. So no, I'm, I'm not gonna really put in a core. I'm gonna do something like this, honestly, because it's a linear, it's very linear. So you don't have as much control. Let's just try another angle. Let's just try something. So notice how I'm changing the angle and I can see how my core is rotating around by depending on. And so if I can figure out where the core would be best suited, something like that, then it might work. Okay, well, it kind of works. Let's just, let's just play with that a little bit more. Let's just see if I move that and make this a little bit darker because that is this area right in here. Let's just go black and white. So click on this little guy, grayscale, just a little darker because I do want that to really be in the shadow, but I do want that ambient light as well. Just, you have to be really little baby strokes. All right, does that work? Control H so I can see what the hell's going on. It needs to be a little bit lighter. There, that's super subtle. All right, so now I've just given it a bezel. All right, now let's say we wanna put some bolts in this sucker. So um, this is aluminum, this outside bezel, and inside is the, uh, the, I don't know, plastic or whatever it might be. Let's, okay, control H so I can see all my paths. Now, I just want to select this path. 
I, I'm, I'm going to choose the, um, what am I choosing? I'm going to choose, oh, the, hold on. Uh, oh, this one. I'm going to choose the, the white plus arrow because all I want is this thing, the inner stroke, that one, because I want to make an outline of that. I want to, so I'm going to say copy, paste in front, control F. And so it's pasting all of this gradient, but I don't want that gradient. I'm going to turn that off. But I am going to slip, slip in a, a part line by making the outline come on top, make that black. Oh, wait, what the hell's going on? Did I just screw everything up? Let me undo. OK, there, I've got that. I'm going to say copy, control, control command, shift, paste in front. Wait, what the heck is going on? Let me just, I, so sometimes when you don't know what's going on, you just kind of grab it, pull it down and see what's going on. Control X, Control F. And let's make it, let's take that off. Let's make this a black line. I hope it works. Okay, it does work, but I screwed up this. Let me just undo all this. Screwed up. Now, why is that not working? Okay, I'm just going to paint. I'm going to just select the inside of this, just the inner one, control, copy, and just randomly paste. I'm just randomly pasting it because I, I don't want to paste on top. It gets too confusing. Okay, there. And all I want to do is make this black and white. So by default, click here, get rid of the white because all I really want is that uh, line. And I'm going to make it much thinner. It's way too thick right now. I think, unless it's part of the design, which might be cool. Sometimes, you know, you discover things, happy accidents, and maybe a big, thick line is cool. I don't know yet. OK, I just placed it in there, eyeballing it. And now with my arrow keys, just to fine adjust it, I'm just making sure it's nice and kind of squared in there. All right, while I'm at it, so you see my black line, it's already starting to look kind of cool. Um, like there's a definite material separation. So I'm going to take this thing. I'm going to copy it, control C and control B. Now, this time I'm going to swap this. I'm, I'm going to change the outline to white. Okay, you don't see it because it's underneath the black line. So I'm going to just gently one, two. I press down one, right one. So now I've got a really perfect, um, bezel you know it really shouts that yes there is a there is a uh, a gap in there but white is just too obnoxious so chill that thing out so that one's the black one and i know i don't want the black one and then you can lock it so you can click again so lock is image uh edit i think it's i, forgot. I do it edit oh object lock all right so that guy object lock lock selection okay so that guy's locked down but the white one underneath i can access it way more easy and uh, because i locked the top one so you see it's white i know it's white but i'm going to double click on this because it's just too much let's just take it down on a notch and unfortunately you cannot see it in real time so hopefully that works yeah okay that's way more subtle way way more subtle all right so there we go let's put some bolts on this sucker we can either go hardcore nutter armored freaking craziness, which I will show you, or we can go subtle. Um, now I'm selecting the shape. Here's my overall shape of my thing, my uh, pill shape. Uh, now this is a very useful tool and I know I'm overloading you with tools, but I have to do it in this case. You make a, there's a huge mistake. If you, let's say you wanted a stripe inside here, so you, you say, all right, I'm going to hold shift. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to just hold shift. Wait, why isn't it? Hold on, let's just try. I don't know why it's staying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. My bad. I'm doing I'm Control Z, Control Z. What the heck? I might have just screwed everything up. I don't know why either. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Oh, man, what did I do? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a refresh thing. 
Um, so, oh God, I lost, did I lose everything? Wait, 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 calm down. Calm down. Why is that not? What is that not? Is this red? Honestly, guys, I don't, I don't really, I'm just going to try to be calm on this and figure out what the heck is going on. I can't even, is there something escape? Is it crashing? Let's see if I can select that. I can't even select that. Okay, I might have Crasherama here. Let's see if I can save this file. Always good to save. You don't want to do all that work and lose it. So save as. Uh oh. Okay. Let's go and just save it on desktop. Desktop and um, hi fi. Hi fi. Just in case. I don't know what's going on, to be honest, because I don't know why this line is red. I never made that red and I can't select anything. Control H. Can't select anything. All right, you know what? I'm just going to restart Illustrator. Something's going on, and I hope it's saved correctly. And I'm just going to have to restart Illustrator. Quit Illustrator. Oh, currently saving. All oh, right, right, right. So it's it's in the middle of a saving process. Normally down here, it tells you the saving process. Oh, well, here it says here, right here, saving. So God knows why it's taking so long, because this is not even hardcore Illustrator but it is saving, so I don't know why. Oh, but I kind of messed up my bezel for some reason. I just let it save though. I have to wait. Mm. Hey guys, I'm gonna go. Wait a second, I'm sharing screen. I need to, I need to, Recording. I'm gonna stop recording for a sec because I need to go to the bathroom quick. I didn't do it.